It's the 80th anniversary of the Emerald Archer, and to celebrate, DC Comics has assembled a 100-page giant penned by some of the most formative creators in Green Arrow history. So without further ado, let's hop into this very special anthology and see what happens next, shall we? Starting things off, we get a Golden Age retro throwback to the early days of Green Arrow and his sidekick Speedy, written by Detective Comics' Mariko Tamaki, who's also just been having an amazing year when it comes to these big collection stories, as she also did Voices of Pride, Batman Black and White, and DC's Festival of Heroes, so you know, good for her. This story finds our heroes dealing with a disappearing bank robber. Roy, being the hot-headed one, gets frustrated, but together he and Ollie formulate a plan to hit this guy with every trick arrow in their arsenal, knowing full well that one's gotta work eventually. They catch the disappearing bandit by covering him in acrylic paint, but before he gets carted off to jail, he manages to steal one of Ollie's arrows and tries to make a deal with a local crime boss for bail by saying that he could use this arrow to discern Green Arrow's true identity. Too bad for this guy, Green Arrow and Speedy are quick learners because they used this dude's own technology against him, meaning that that stolen arrow disappears before he can properly sell it. A cute little throwback story I enjoyed and a real nice way to kick off this collection, I felt. Next up, we have a Tom Taylor story, a man who's done great things with the Arrow family of heroes, both in Injustice and in the deceased universes. This one deals with Ollie learning the finer points of boxing from superhero heavyweight Ted Grant the Wildcat. Naturally, after a lifetime of fighting from afar with arrows, Ollie isn't great in a fist fight, which is exactly what Ted hopes to change, and he says that, you know, you can't keep punching evil from 20 feet away your whole life. Also, there's the matter of Black Canary, Ollie's love of his life. She's one of the best fist fighters in the DC universe, so if he wants to be able to stand next to her in battle, he's gonna have to learn something, and soon. Their training session gets crashed, however, by a wasp-themed supervillain looking for revenge on Ted, who ends up getting shot in the head. Which fills Ollie with dread, which means he's going to have to put this villain to bed, which he does by cobbling together his very first boxing glove arrow. As it turns out, you absolutely can fight evil from 20 feet away, if you're Green Arrow, that is. Also, Ted didn't actually die because he's Wildcat, that was just six of his nine lives. This was another real feel-good story and a great showcase for Taylor's ability as a writer to do amazing characterization work in a very short amount of time. Now, the third story in this collection is from Harley Quinn writer Stephanie Phillips. Once again, we actually move forward in time as Green Arrow is now wearing probably his most well-known costume, the one that everyone thinks of when they think of him. This story also pays homage to Ollie's time in the JLA and just how stubborn he can be. He gets mad when the League forced him to do monitor duty while the rest of them get to go on some big cosmic adventure. Naturally, aliens end up attacking the Watchtower while everyone else is away, and Green Arrow is forced to defeat them single-handedly, which he can do thanks to the help of a special bow from another dimension that the Leaguers were keeping in their trophy case. I like this story a lot as it shows Green Arrow, unlike other heroes, can actually be really funny when he's allowed to be, and that's exactly what we get here. From there, we get a Mike Grell story, which is just a straight-up return to the days of Longbow Hunter, still probably the most famous Green Arrow story ever told. This is a big action piece that sees Arrow and Shadow join forces to battle a group of human traffickers and take them down in style. Honestly, not much else to say about this one. It gets in, does its job, and leaves. From there, we get a very artsy story by Ram V, who more or less compares important chapters in the life of Oliver Queen to the famous Henry Wadsworth Longfellow poem, The Arrow and the Song. Never heard of it? Oh, you're missing out. I shot an arrow into the air, it fell to earth I know not where, for so swiftly it flew the sight, I could not follow it in its flight. I breathed a song in the air, it fell to earth I knew not where, for whose sight so keen and strong that it can follow the flight of song. Long, long afterward in an oak I found the arrow still unbroken, the song from beginning to end I found again in the heart of a friend. Ultimately, I would say this one ends up being probably the most creative story in the collection. I appreciate the merging of comic book storytelling in classic literature. Now, at this point, you might notice some of the bigger Green Arrow names are actually missing from this collection. No Kevin Smith and no Judd Winnick, which for me is kind of a heartbreaker as together they end up making probably my favorite era in Green Arrow comics, or at least the stories that made me into the super fan that I am. Worry not, though, because they actually end up doing something super clever and something I hope the future DC anniversary issue 
issues do. They collect a bunch of the best panels from the past runs, including the ones from writers who couldn't do new material for this collection, or in some cases have passed away. It's a wonderful little time capsule and a great way to break up the other stories in this book. After that, the next full story is from Brandon Thomas. You may know his work from Excellence or as the writer on the upcoming hardware book from the new Milestone. This story actually focuses not on Ollie, but instead on his son Connor Hawk, who became Green Arrow after his father's death. He also just so happens to be one of comic books' very first prominent multiracial heroes, that is when artists aren't lightening his skin, but hey, that's a story for a whole other day. We see Connor rescue a group of people from terrorists at the Old Queen Industry Building. Connor is also a very different type of Green Arrow than his father, because when he fights and defeats villains, he does so with non-pointy arrows, because, well, he's always been something of a pacifist, and that extends to his crime fighting. Personally, I'm really happy this story is in the collection, because it honors Green Arrow long history and manages to be just another moment in 2021 where Connor Hawk seems to be finally getting his roses as a character. Moving right along, we have a Roy Harper-centric story from Devin Grayson. We see Arsenal staking out a warehouse while also telling his daughter Leanne a bedtime story. This story just so happens to be a dressed-up version of his own life told in the style of a Navajo legend, the Navajo tribe being the people who actually raised Roy from a boy. Arsenal talks about meeting Green Arrow for the first time, becoming his sidekick and eventually his adopted son, but also how when Ollie left with Green Lantern to be hard-traveling heroes, how hurt and lost he truly felt, and how he eventually ended up turning to drugs to cope. Big twist surprise though, Ollie is actually in the room with Leanne helping watch her for the night and he tells his end of a very famous story, the one that is immortalized in the Neil Adams cover wherein Ollie throws out his ward because he's a junkie. To hear Ollie tell it though, he wasn't really angry, he was just scared and didn't want Roy to see how frightened he truly was. Naturally, with the help of Black Canary and his friends in the Titans, Roy got clean and came out the other end a much better person, a hero welcome backed by his friend and mentor, finally. This was a real sweet, touching story, proof positive that Devin Grayson can still bring the heat as a writer and weave one hell of an emotional tale all these years later. It's also a wonderful little spotlight piece for the Navajo people in storytelling tradition, something that I'm always glad Green Arrow comes back to every so often. Now, this next story is quite special to me, as it was both written and drawn by Phil Hester, the man who alongside Judd Winnick put together probably my favorite Green Arrow run of all time. In this one, Green Arrow is on the trail of a kidnapped little girl with amazing meta powers, ones that sees Ollie end up having to do battle with his greatest foes like Onomatopoeia and Count Vertigo, as well as eventually members of his own friends and family. That's because this girl actually has the power to warp reality. In the end, Green Arrow only wins the fight by showing this scared little girl that he's willing to stand by her and fight no matter what, even if it means sacrificing his own life. Again, this story felt every bit the throwback I wanted it to be, a reminder why I miss the old Winnick run so much, and also the only place in this collection where they mention Mia Dearden, kind of the lost Speedy and lost Green Arrow sidekick. From there, we have a story from Vita Ayala focusing on the romantic side of Green Arrow and Black Canary's superhero partnership. They have a fight on their anniversary, but when Ollie ends up getting grabbed by Deathstroke, the two lovers manage to put all their differences aside and fix their problem while defeating a villain. What's not to love about that. Benjamin Percy is on hand for this collection too. He was the DC Rebirth writer for Green Arrow and the last full-time Green Arrow writer as well. We see Ollie and his assembled cast of supporting characters, including Diggle, probably the only thing from the CW show to actually make the jump to comics and stay, come under attack by Merlin, though they manage to defeat the Dark Archer because they know the terrain around their hideout so much better than he does. This is probably one of the shortest stories overall, but offers a nice little nostalgia hit all its own too for an era not that long ago. Now, the penultimate story in this anniversary collection is from Jeff Lemire, the man who helped put Green Green Arrow back on the map in the latter days of his New 52 series, and this one is called The Last Green Arrow Story because, as the title suggests, it tries to imagine what Green Arrow's final days might look like. We see an older, more paranoid Oliver Queen return to the island of his rebirth for what he believes will be one last showdown with old villain Komodo, yet another evil archer. Only, here's the thing, there is no final battle, and instead we get a very abstract little conclusion wherein Green Arrow makes peace with a version of himself before metaphorically self-immolating. Honestly, I wanted more of this when I felt it was too short, but maybe that's a compliment in its own right. That brings us to the final story in this collection, which actually isn't about Green Arrow at all, but instead 
about Denny O'Neill, a comics legend who probably had more impact on Green Arrow as a character than just about any other writer. It's written by his son, Larry O'Neill, and it features snapshots from his departed father's life and career. We see how he became inspired to write, how he loved and lost and ended up leaving his mark on DC Comics and building a legacy that will certainly last forever. The story also showcases that some of the best things that we love about Green Arrow as a hero came from O'Neill's own life and experiences. Even on his deathbed, he's met by Green Arrow and the other heroes that he poured so much of his real self into. It's a beautifully touching finale, deeply sad, and one that I'm not going to lie, I was brought to tears by. I had to walk around a bit before I could even record this video. It's just that good. An amazingly deserving tribute to an amazing man. And so that was Green Arrow 80th Anniversary Special, and if you couldn't tell, I absolutely loved it. Not only because Green Arrow is my favorite superhero, and because this anthology really nailed all the reasons why I like him and his story so much, but honestly, as someone who reads a lot of these anniversary books from DC for work, this one might actually be the best one they've done yet, from the great mix of old and new talent, from celebrating multiple different eras in Green Arrow's publication history. From that great panel collage showing off all the different writers and all the different voices that Green Arrow has had over the years to even fun stuff like Green Arrow's very own chili recipe being included here in this collection. Top it all off with that incredibly touching tribute to Denny O'Neill and I would feel very comfortable giving this one a 10 out of 10 and I don't care who knows if you're a Green Arrow fan this just became an absolutely must own item. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.